Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting, which is a video series about Fair Isle Knitting. Um, my name is Emma and I am the host. I live in Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C., where I'm a nanny, which is why the desk is so small. <laughs> and um, as I mentioned in my introduction video, I know that you can't actually tell that the desk is so small, <laughs> but it feels very small to me. Um, and I thought the name was clever. So. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Kuvel Cowl by Mary Jane Mucklestone in Fair Isle Weekend, um, continuing my series of knitting my way through Fair Isle Weekend. Um, this is a cowl, it's a single cowl with a twist. There's a picture, there's another picture of someone wearing it, and here is a picture of it lying flat. There's the ends. So it has um, five colors blue, red, white, yellow, and brown, yeah. So they're all traditional Shetland colors. Um, although it's knit in jumper weight, and yeah, two ply jumper weight, which is a wool and spun yarn. Um, whereas the original colors would have been naturally dyed and probably worsted spun. Um, I knit mine in, this is, it's on the, the blocking um, cardboard, which is not actually totally flat. <laughs> Um, yeah, I put it over cardboard to block. So this is mine. It is not knit in the original colors. It is knit in greens and brown. Two browns and white. So there are five colors and I almost used them in the same way as you're using the pattern. Um, not quite. Um, the, I wanted more contrast so I made white the background color. You can see here that white is never the background color. It's the, um, it's always the the contrast, it's contrast here and the contrast here, but I wanted more um, more contrast between the green, the sort of medium green color that I used, and then the the brown heather that I used. So um, so I used white. Although you need more, you need more than 50 grams of white if you do that. So that's just important to know. Okay, so um, I used. All Shetland wool for this. I used Jameson and Smith uh, two ply jumper weight. I used Jameson and Smith Supreme jumper weight, which is the natural undyed colors of jumper weight. It's the same yarn, although uh, the uh, Supreme jumper weight is undyed, so it's not quite so processed and it's a little bit thicker. There's a little bit less yardage. Um, so make sure you know that if you are looking for specific yardages for a pattern. And I used one ball of Jameson of Shetland in the, the medium green. So you can find all the colors on my in my show notes on my blog. But I will hold up the balls. I'm working on a hat in the, in the leftovers. This is the Hesty Hat by Ella Gordon, which is in the Shetland Wool Adventures Journal, Volume One. Um, and this bag was made for me by my neighbor in Vermont, Margie. Um, who is the mother to my two oldest friends from home, <laughs> Sachi and Lucy. Hi, Sachi and Lucy. They both knit, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, and I love this bag, it's so cool, and it has woodland animals inside, and a lot of pockets. So there's a bear and some red hedgehog. Let's see, I think that's the sun. I don't know, there's flowers. I love this bag so much. There's an owl and a bunny. I like rabbits. Um, yeah, there you go. Anyway, that's enough. Um, and it has these cool, like it has like cinches, leather cinches that you can pull it shut <laughs> if you want. And it has a handle. I always keep small fair owl projects in here because it's just the right size and it has a lot of pockets. Um, okay, so this is the darkest green, which is you go. Let's see if I have the label for this. I should know what it is. I don't have the label with me. Um, it's in the show notes. You can see what color it is. Um, there is a dark brown, which is, oh, that was, this is two ply jumper weight. This is a uh, supreme jumper weight in 2009, Youglet. It's called Youglet um, also. The jumper weights supreme uh, colors have, have names. Um, which is like the shade of the sheep that they come from. This is Supreme Jumper Weight in 2001, which is just white. 
Um, it is similar to 1A, which is a, the, the like dyed version. This is more of a cream, shade 1A. Um, but it's a little bit whiter. Um, and it's naturally, uh, natural, undyed. Um, let's see, the, this one is not Supreme Jumper Weight. This one is shade 2 of 2 ply. Um, light fawn might be the right name for it. And then the medium green is Jameson's of Shetland. Oh, that's still attached, so I can't take it off. And the color is Leaf. Um, and I did notice the difference in a uh, more pronounced way between Jameson's of Shetland yarn and two ply jumper weight here. Um, I will do a separate video. I have a separate video on the differences between those two yarns, but um, yeah, I prefer Jameson Smith because um, I find it less easily breakable and it is more consistent in its um, in the spin. It's like this consistent um, thickness weight. Um, Although, to be fair, Jamesons of Shetland produces everything on Shetland, including, I think they do the spinning on Shetland too. So it is, um, like, and all the machinery is, like, cool and vintage, which is awesome. Um, you can read about it in the Shetland Wool Adventures Journal. They have, I think that's where it's, the essay is. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. You can read all about their mill. So, uh, again, I used five colors, just like the original but um, yeah I swapped the the brown heather and the white um, finished dimensions are mine are pretty close the, uh, the, the width or height I mean they say height because it's like sitting on your neck the height is eight inches mine is a, closer to nine this is slightly bigger um, and the circumference is 20 and a half inches um, I think mine is 29 or 30 it's closer to the correct horizontal gauge, but it's a cowl, so this doesn't really matter. Um, the needle, suggested needle size is a three. Um, I size down to a two. I almost always knit a size down because I knit looser. Combination style knitting is uh, generally looser than regular English style knitting, so that's why. Um, and I, that's my preferred uh, needle size for a Fair Isle accessories, size two. It says the gauge is 32 stitches by 35 rounds. Mine is slightly bigger than that. It's probably 30. My, I knit this sweater. This is Lapwing by Marie Wallen in two ply jumper weight. I knit this on a size two needle and it's more like 30 stitches. Um, I don't usually care about vertical gauge, <laughs> mostly horizontal. You can just measure vertical stuff. I mean, if it's like way off for the yoke, then you're gonna be in trouble, but most of the time, horizontal gauge is more important in fair isle knitting. Um, so you knit this um, construction, uh, you just knit a big tube and you start with a provisional cast on. So I actually, I hate provisional cast ons, I always just cast on and waste yarn and I take it out and it, it's a lot more tedious to do it that way because you can't like unzip it in the same way. You actually have to take it out stitch by stitch, but I find that I'm much more careful if I do that and I don't drop stitches. Because um, you really want to be careful when you need a matching number of stitches to Kitchener together or to graft in a different way Like you could do a three needle bind off um, Although then you would have a Like it would be it would be obvious. Um, you can see here in my radiant star cowl I, There's a three needle bind off and it's that's what it looks like from the outside and you can't turn this inside out when you're done, <laughs> so um, Like you wouldn't be able to do that inside out three needle bind off Which is what you usually would do if you were doing that um so you knit it circularly in a tube, then you block it and dry it, and then you give it a half twist and graft the ends together. So you don't have to give it a half twist, but giving it a half twist, um, it says, she says, the wee twist gives the cowl a bit of a boost in the snuggle quotient and makes sure it stays in place around your neck when the winds begin to howl. So it just makes it a little snugger. snugger. And the way that you um, do that is by putting a little blocking stitch marker halfway around at the provisional cast on round. Um, I ended up cutting out the first uh, Peary pattern anyway because they didn't like the color. So the original color I chose um, instead of the Uglet, which is the natural dark brown, is so I originally chose this one, which is shade 2004. Don't know what that is called, but it's shade 2004 so you can find it. Um, I ended up choosing the darker one because this was too warm. 
I should have saved the piece that I cut out so you could see, but I threw it away. <laughs> um, so I used, and I tried using this as the background color and I didn't like the contrast with the leaf green. Uh, so I scrapped it and I went for one. So this is a lot more cool of a brown. Um, it's more gray. It, I actually considered just using a, either a charcoal or even a greenish gray, um, but I ended up enjoy, enjoying. I liked this one. I like this one the best. So I went with Uglet. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show that you should be prepared to change colors because they don't always look the way that you want and you should twist them around a card to see how they look together before you start knitting, <laughs> which is would have saved me some time, but otherwise not a big deal. Um, I tend to, if I'm switching colors from an original Fair Isle color scheme, I tend to stick to one color family. Um, although sometimes, again, I like with the Radiant Star Cowl, which I talk about in a different video, this is two color families. So I did pink and uh, greens. Um, and in the original pattern, it's a dark background, it's like a charcoal background, but she does the blues and um, yellows. So I did the same thing. I just changed the changed the color families. And then I stuck with the pink, the bright pink um, is a big contrast for both. So it's that's like proper Fair Isle style is to have in an all over to have the middle be like a total contrast. And um, so that works here. And it looks, you know, green looks nice with pink. It's like, it's very reminiscent of a garden. So uh, that's how I chose like those. But the this one, I don't know, red, yellow, and blue are just, that's a lot for me. So I chose, um, I wanted to do, originally was gonna do it all in neutrals, but then I was choosing colors and I thought, mm, I kind of want to do green. So I decided to do a medium green and then a darker green. And you can see here, um, hold it over here. There we go. So there's um, the medium green here, uh, leafed with the darker green, which is like 80 something. 80, I want to say it's 82. You can see it in the show notes. It's, it's there. Um, and I contrasted this one with white and then I went to a slightly darker like fawn color for the contrast in the middle stripe which is very subtle and as Hazel Tyndall always says you should match up your like you should lay out your dark colors and your light colors and then match the darkest dark with the darkest light and the lightest light with the darkest light and so then there's always a nice amount of contrast so that's what I did I used the white with the lighter green and the slightly lighter brown with the darker green. And it works out. It's really, it has like a kind of a nice fade effect. Um, and then it contrasts well with this white here and then the Uglet brown, which goes well with this brown because um, they're all kind of heathered. Uh, the only non-heathered shade is the medium leaf green by Jameson's of Shetland. Um, and also obviously the white is not heathered. Um, so. That's how I chose the colors. It is not that traditional. Um, green was a traditional color. I think they had green. Maybe they didn't. They definitely had red, yellow, like gold, because they had matter, which makes red. They had indigo, which makes blue. I don't know what makes brown and yellow, but they had yellow and brown, and then they had white, and they had black, like Shetland black, and neutral colors, because the natural sheep. Um, the browns and the whites and the grays of the sheep. Um, but this, so it's non-traditional colors, but I don't, I just want red, yellow, and blue. Um, so she talks about the origins of this pattern in the, uh, just in the pattern notes. Um, she says, there's a very old jumper in the Shetland Museum and Archives that I visit every chance I get. Um, it's from the 1890s and it's one of the oldest fair owl garments in the museum featuring two classic OXO patterns alternating with a single piri. So there's the single piri. Piri means a small pattern, so that's the piri. This is an OXO pattern. There's an X and there's an O. And then this is one as well. So here, this is, it's a, some people call this the lozenge. So that's the O. It's, it's a lozenge with a different pattern and it. it's the same general shape here, but this has the four things and this doesn't. And then this is the same X. Um, and that's actually a really good way to design if you're looking to design a pattern. Um, keep the X the same and then just change what's inside the lozenge and keep it the same size. Uh, you can get reference books on Fair Isle that are, you know, tons of patterns in it. Like, 
I mean, I have several. I'll do a, um, there's a video, a separate video on books, but um, I'm about to show you the picture of the original <laughs> pattern, which is in, I, it's not, you can't see the original pattern in this book. She does not give you the picture, but it's in the traditional feral knitting or the complete book of traditional feral knitting by Sheila McGregor. And this book is from, there's literally 70 pages of grid patterns in this. Um, that's what I was just about to say. Um, 1981, first publication. So let's see, um, before I show you, I mean, you can probably see here, there's just tons of grids. There's 70 pages of these. So like you can see here, you can just interchange these kinds of patterns. They have what you can put inside the lozenge here. You can change it. Anyway, um, you should get this book. You can get it, I don't know if they still print it, but you can definitely get it on like Amazon or thrift books or probably got I get a lot of books on thrift books um, here's the original jumper so it is the same colors as the cowl um, it's a little more aggressive <laughs> it's the red um, and it's not super high contrast the red against the white but you can still see the the bands of brown and yellow in the middle um, that's much more of a like a traditional fair isle color scheme whereas mine it's sort of faded it's harder to see um, but yeah, that's it. Close up of Jersey Knitted in Fair Isle in 1895, Shetland, New York. There you go. Um, so, yeah. Oh, one thing that is something that I found frustrating about this that you could change, but I didn't, is that the pattern doesn't line up properly. So this is um, a 16 uh, stitch repeat here, the, these two, the bigger ones, and then the period is an eight stitch repeat. So theoretically, you could like line up the points <laughs> um, because they're like they're both divisible by eight. Um, but it, originally, they they didn't really care about that in Fair Isle knitting. Um, even like as referenced in the Mally hat, um, doesn't really doesn't really matter um, traditionally. So they're not lined up in this because they're not lined up in the original. Um, so I didn't change that, although. Like in hindsight, I'm kind of like, oh, I could have just that would have been easy, but so if you're if you're really interested in symmetry, you can do that. Uh, it just doesn't the pattern does not um, doesn't have that. Um, and one thing that I found about this piece, this is the first like real banded OXO piece I've done. Um, so OXO's OXO, um, that's like the the main um, rule not really a rule but often the bands have these have the OXO pattern so here we we have it the, as I said oh there's an O there's an X there's an O they're sometimes really hard to see or um really like you know they're not specific they don't look exactly like O's and X's um but when you have OXO patterns they're really easy to memorize they're very intuitive so as long as you know I mean this one was super easy as long as you know which band you're on, you almost always know what's, first of all, you repeat it a lot of times, but you almost always know just what's coming next based on your own intuition. Like the X gets smaller and smaller and this, the lozenge gets wider and wider. So you're doing a, a little cross here and then two little crosses here and then one and a little cross here and it, it, it's symmetrical. So you're doing the same thing for the first part as the second part. So you hardly need to reference, I mean, reference the pattern like once you've start started doing it. It's just pattern references a lot um, while well, it's necessary. And it sh just goes to show like the Shetland knitters, they didn't have pattern books, like they had graph paper that they wrote their patterns on just like in this book with the pattern pages. Like they had graph paper and they dot did dotted designs. I mean, these are like bands for mittens. Um, I mean, they could just be bands, but this is like you would find this in Norwegian mittens, silver mittens. Um, so this is called a spider. Um, yeah, you will also see me talking about Norwegian Icelandic strand knitting traditions too, because they are related to Shetland traditions and they have similar wool and they're also fun. <laughs> I really like Norwegian knitting too. Um, so that's the Kubel cowl. Um, I'll insert a picture of it when it's like finished. <laughs> I haven't kitchened it together yet. It's just finished drying today. So that's my project for the rest of the day is to sew this together so that it can finally be worn. I'm excited about it. So 
thanks for watching. Um, and this has been Tiny Desk Knitting with 